plane waves are traveling on the surface of water in a ripple tank. They are moving from a region of deep water into a region of shallow water. Figure shows the wave fronts of the wave from above. A. State what happens at the boundary if anything to. The frequency of the waves. The speed of the waves. The wavelength of the waves. We know that when water waves move from a region of a certain depth to another region of different depth, refraction will take place. When the wave falls perpendicular to the boundary, there will be no change in direction. To answer this question, we must know if our wave is coming from deep to shallow or from shallow to deep. The answer will be different. In our case, it's clear that the wave is moving from deep region to shallow region, perpendicular to the boundary separating the deep and the shallow. In this case, frequency stays the same. Frequency is not affected by anything. It is always the same. From deep to shallow, the speed of water waves will decrease. Also, the wavelength will decrease. Of course, if the water waves were moving from shallow to deep, the opposite will happen but the frequency will stay the same. Question B. Describe the motion of a molecule on the surface as the water moves. We know that water waves are transverse waves. So, if water moves as shown, are moving from left to right, for example, this means that the surface of the water will move up and down perpendicular to the direction of the wave. The answer will be, molecules move up and down, perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. Question C. On figure, draw carefully the wave fronts and direction of the waves after they go into the shallow region. In this question, the wave is not falling perpendicular to the boundary. It is incident with an angle. That's why this wave must break. The key to answer this question is to identify the points of intersection between the incident wave and the boundary. Three ways of thinking here. Two of them are incorrect and only one is the correct answer. One student may continue the wave as shown. In this case, the wave didn't break. The wave didn't change direction. Another thing that is incorrect in this answer is that the wavelength does not change. We know from before that when the wave moves from deep to shallow, the wavelength must decrease. As long as the direction is unchanged and the wavelength is unchanged, this means that this answer is wrong. Let's see another way of thinking. One student decides to break the wave as shown, as it goes from deep to shallow. Okay, let's test this answer. In this answer, the wave changes direction. This is right. But another thing that is wrong is that the wavelength in the shallow region, which is the spacing between the wave fronts, is greater than the deep region. This is not right. It should have been smaller. That's why. This answer is incorrect. Let's see the third way of thinking. This student breaks the wave as it comes from deep to shallow, but he breaks it in the opposite direction from previous. It's clear that the wave direction has changed. This is correct. Also, the spacing between the waves becomes smaller. This means the wavelength has decreased as the wave came from deep region to shallow region. This answer is correct, and this will be our wave, after it moves from deep region to shallow region. Three marks are given by the mark scheme for Wave changes direction correctly. This is one mark. Refracted waves are parallel and equally spaced. This is the second mark. The third mark is for Wavelength must be smaller in shallow region than in deep region.